happen is the body is going to decide after a certain period of time that this state of starvation is not going anywhere. It's not ending anytime soon. So the body literally tells itself, well, we better get used to this. And it will literally shut down specific functions in the body to preserve energy. It needs to make sure that all of the available energy it has, this 1500 calories, this needs to be reserved for functions that our survival depends on, such as vital organ functions. Like I mentioned earlier, the lungs breathing, the heart beating, all of that, right? So this, this plateau and this full-blown starvation mode, or we'll call it mild starvation mode, is when people going through this plateau start to experience really crappy symptoms. They might have joint aches and pains, they might have trouble sleeping, thinning hair, hair loss, they might have brittle nails, they might even get tooth sensitivity, dry eyes, dry skin, all this stuff that comes along with micronutrient deficiencies, right? So you hit the plateau and you get those really nasty symptoms. So when that happens, you go back to your personal trainer or your online influencer or your doctor and say, I'm just not losing any more weight, what do I do? And they will tell you, you need to cut more calories and exercise more to break through the plateau. I want to be clear with you, every time I got my credential, credentials, my specialist in sports nutrition, specialist in fitness nutrition, this is what they tell me to tell you when I go to school. They say, oh, they're not losing weight anymore? Drop their calories by 250 calories a day and add two to three hours of exercise per week. Re-examine in three weeks. If they're not losing weight, cut 250 calories and add two to three hours of activity. That's what I learned, ladies and gentlemen. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Hmm, right? That's why I don't care about credentials, okay? Because that's literally what you're taught in the textbooks. They tell you you need to cut more calories and you need to exercise more. So, okay, let's do that. So we're going to say, oh, let's not go too drastic. Let's just cut 250 calories like my textbooks told me to. Now you're eating 1,250 calories per day. Now you're bumping up against a huge risk of multiple micronutrient deficiencies. Anything under 1,200 for females, 1,600 for males, anything under 1,200 and you're really creeping up on micronutrient deficiencies. Now you might, I repeat, you might lose a few extra pounds, but I assure you, a lot of that weight that you lose is going to be lean muscle tissue. So you're gonna lose lean mass, you might lose a little bit of fat, and the unpleasant symptoms are going to continue to get worse. Now, by this point, 1250, you're probably creeping up on hypothyroidism. Now, again, some of you who have macros from me, calories from me, I have dealt with some of you who are four foot nine and 96 pounds. This doesn't necessarily apply to you, that everybody is different. Right? If you are teeny, 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 tiny, don't freak out. Like Justin has me eating 1,350 calories, I'm gonna die, right? Like don't freak out. This is not true of everybody, okay? These are general blanket terms, the best we can give them. There's always going to be outliers. I wanna make that clear. But you're probably button up for most people, an average sized human in America, right? You're probably button up on hypothyroidism by now, okay? Now, not to mention when you lose lean muscle tissue, if you take a guy like me who's, who's five foot eight and right now because of mass gains, I'm like 12.5% body fat and I weigh 171 pounds. Then you take a guy who's 30% body fat, five foot eight and 171 pounds. He has way more fat than I do and I have way more muscle than he does. My BMR is higher at rest than his BMR is because I have more muscle mass. So this is why people say, I'm gonna turn muscle into fat. You're not turning muscle into fat. You're raising your basal metabolic rate. The more lean muscle tissue you have, the more metabolically expensive it is to maintain. That's why bodybuilding is completely unnatural. You don't wanna be the most jacked guy in a hunter-gatherer tribe because you need to eat the most food and that's very hard to sustain. It's metabolically expensive. So when you're losing that lean muscle tissue from unhealthy weight loss like this, then it lowers your BMR even further. And on and on and on. Do you see how silly the calories in, calories out, oversimplified idea of weight loss is when you look at it like this? You can't continue this trend indefinitely. If you continue this trend indefinitely every time you hit a plateau, you will die, <laughs> right? If we take it to its extreme, obviously, I'm not saying people are dying, but if you were to take it to its extreme and only cut more calories and exercise more every single time you hit a weight loss plateau, yeah, if you took it to its logical end point, that would be starvation, right? So what happens when you're here for too long and you keep hitting plateaus, you get sick of this never ending crappy feeling of starvation and you start to eat more. What happens? Well, while calories do not tell the whole story, they do still matter. So let's talk about adaptation and set point. 
what happens is your body decides that your new BMR is 1,250 calories. You gave it 1,250 calories a day for so long that it lowered your basal metabolic rate, right? Got you to 1,250. So what happens when you say, I really feel like crap. I think I'm gonna start eating 1,600 calories again, right? Well, guess what happens? You're now technically eating a surplus of 350 calories. I don't know, <laughs> I'm terrible at math. But anyway, you're technically eating a caloric surplus. So that's what happens. So you start eating more food and the weight starts to go up again. So you're going to gain weight, okay? Now this is just one of the ways that the body will try to protect its body weight set point. This is one of many functions in the body that's going to happen because if you've been overweight for two decades, your body thinks its set point is overweight, okay? Whether you like it or not, so obviously, I just want to be clear about something. So this, this whole story is dealing with calories, right? So we're talking about calories. Now, of course, this would be a different story even if we did this with proper macronutrient ratios like I use in Clovis, that would be a different story. Still not a good idea, right? But it would be a different story. So this is all in the mainstream context of a calorie is a calorie no matter what food source it comes from. 10,000 calories of Pop-Tarts is the same of 10,000 calories of grass-fed beef. This insane advice that the mainstream is still preaching. It's incredibly dangerous, incredibly dangerous, right? So we could certainly solve most of the problems of this by choosing the right macronutrients, but no. The mainstream says there's no such thing as good foods, no such thing as bad foods, everything in moderation. It's all about calories in versus calories out. Cut calories, lose weight. That's what they tell you. So what happens is you follow this, your results still suck. They continue to suck over the long term. The roller coaster continues. You finally get so fed up that you say, screw it, and you go back to eating 2,000 calories a day. But we know your body weight set point was down there at 1,250 now because you abused the crap out of your body. So you go back to 2,000 calories a day. What happens? Boom. You gain all the weight back and then some. You gain it all back, and not only that, but you gain it back in a much shorter period of time than it took to lose it. Why? Because the body's confused and wants to get back to the body weight set point that we're gonna talk about. This is absolute insanity. It makes me sad, it makes me angry, and I don't understand why we still do this to people. Why can't the mainstream just admit that they got it wrong? Why? It's a 70 plus percent failure rate, everybody. Over 70% of Americans are overweight. How can we not wrap our head around the fact that this is a failed experiment? This is a failed experiment. If I have one more registered dietitian give me hate online and tell me, well, you're scaring people with all that sugar talk. You're telling people sugar is bad. Sugar's not bad in moderation. Everything in moderation. No, you're making people sick. You're making people sick. Okay? Crazy. So, what makes Clovis different? Let's talk about what makes Clovis different.